The 90s was a funny old time when it came to Batman movies, as things became increasingly bright and colourful and childish. However, during the release of live-action Batman movies that were focusing on bat credit cards and bat nipples, there was another movie that slipped right through the cracks, and no one saw it come or go. Batman Mask of the Phantasm, an animated Batman movie which surprisingly did the opposite of the live-action Batman movies and made a very mature and adult movie. Released in 1993, Mask of the Phantasm is a haunting Batman tale where a grim reaper-like entity is killing off members of the mob, to which Batman is getting the blame for. And to complicate matters, Bruce Wayne's old girlfriend Andrea returns to Gotham City, where Bruce has many flashbacks of a time when he was becoming Batman and nearly chose a normal life had he stayed with Andrea. The Phantom killings and Batman's tragic past with Andrea are intertwined and leads to a showdown with the Joker and an abandoned fairground in this mesmerizing animated movie which features the voices of Batman animated favorites Kevin Conroy as Batman and Mark Hamill as the Joker. Some people argue that Batman Mask of the Phantasm is actually the best Batman movie of all time. A silent masterpiece which came and went which no one even knew about. A masterpiece of which each time someone discovers it, they are instantly pulled in. So to celebrate this Bat Gem, we are going to look into 10 things that you didn't know about Batman Mask of the Phantasm. So let's check it out. Number 10, originally going to be a straight to video release. Batman Mask of the Phantasm is a spin-off movie to the popular noir-styled Batman animated series, which made its debut in 1992. To great praise, thanks to its mature style of storytelling, with the subject matter and themes being aimed at adults as much as children. Warner Brothers wanted to release a straight-to-video movie in between the broadcasting of seasons in order to keep fans invested and interested in the show. However, once the movie went into production, Warner Brothers were very impressed with the quality of the script and the animation, so it was decided to make Batman Mask of the Phantasm a theatrical release, be that a limited one, with the movie being given a budget of $6 million, with a scheduled Christmas Day release. I think from the very start of the movie, you can tell this is going to be a Batman story like no other, with the superb quality of animation as the camera pans through Gotham City's skyline, which was actually CGI, along with a new haunting theme. It was clear this was going to be grander and more epic than your usual episode of the animated series. Number 9, Original Movie Idea. Before the theatrical movie of the TV show was based on Bruce Wayne's tragic journey to becoming Batman, along with the mysterious Phantasm adversary, the original idea for the movie was the storyline of Trial, which would eventually become a two-part entry in the actual animated series. Trial sees Batman and his current girlfriend kidnapped by some of Gotham City's most terrifying villains, where they put Batman on trial, where he must convince them to spare his life. Trial is an interesting and intense story and asks the question, does Batman protect the city from deranged villains or is it his presence itself that creates these obscure enemies? However, it was felt that had they gone with the Trial storyline then there wouldn't be much action, with most of the movie revolving around a restrained Batman. And so the writers thought it would be more interesting creating a haunting love story and writer Alan Burnett turned to Citizen Kane for inspiration in terms of how the story of what's going on in the present is shown through tragic flashbacks of the past. And even some angles in the way that the movie is shot is similar to Citizen Kane. So I guess you could literally say that Batman Mask of the Phantasm is the Citizen Kane of Batman. Number 8. The First Batman Origin Movie Batman Mask of the Phantasm has the distinct honour of being the very first theatrical Batman movie to show his origins, as a young Bruce Wayne takes a troubled journey from young man to Batman, the creature of the night who strikes fear into the hearts of evil people. 
The movie perfectly shows the trial and errors of Bruce Wayne finding his dark superhero alter ego and is very believable but most of all is very tragic especially in knowing that Bruce Wayne could have had a normal life with his love Andrea, had she not suddenly left town. People often assume that Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins is the first movie to give Batman an origin story. And it was the first live action movie origin story, but the first actual movie to show Bruce Wayne's rise to Batman was Mask of the Phantasm. In fact, I always felt that Batman Begins even took some inspiration from Mask of the Phantasm, in that both movies show Wayne as a pre-Batman crime fighter with a black ski mask. However, Mask of the Phantasm is the second Batman theatrical movie to be a spin-off to a Batman TV show. The first one was Batman the Movie, which was a spin-off movie to the popular 1960s TV series, which was less tragic and more spoof. Number 7. Voice Cast As mentioned, Batman Mask of the Phantasm sees the return of Kevin Conroy as Batman and Mark Hamill as the Joker, and both are in top form for this movie. Joker. Can't be too careful with all those weirdos around. <laughs> Mark Hamill in particular, I always felt was intoxicating with his voice performance in Mask of the Phantasm. But what about the other voices that were used to bring this tale to life? Well, Andrea was voiced by actress Dana Delaney, who that very same year also starred in Tombstone as Josephine Marcus, and ironically, she would go on to get cast as Lois Lane for the Superman animated series. Stacey Keach provided the voice of Carl Bermont. Keach has been starring in TV shows and movies since the 70s, and is probably best known for his performance in American History X. Godfather star Abe Vigoda voiced the mobster Salvatore, also known as the Weezer and Ark Bochner voiced the slimy character of Arthur Reeves, a character who was out to put a stop to Batman. Bochner is best known for his amusing role in Die Hard, where he played Harry, and he already had a connection to the DC Universe, as he previously played the love interest Ethan in the live-action Supergirl movie in 1984. And not forgetting, of course, my main man Dick Miller as crime boss Chucky Soul. I don't know why, but knowing that Dick Miller is in this movie just makes it that bit more awesome. Number 6, Batman Mask of the Phantasm started a trend of DC animated movies. It was something of a novelty having an extended episode of the Batman animated series converted into a movie with a higher theatrical quality. However, Batman Mask of the Phantasm started a popular trend of releasing DC comic themed animated movies many of which were of the highest quality when it comes to writing and storytelling. Many argue that the DC animated movies are even superior to the live action ones, and even to this day, special theatrical events are made out of the release of some DC animated movies, as seen in prior years with The Killing Joke. Batman Mask of the Phantasm did get two sequels, but they weren't as successful. But that could be down to making them straight to video releases. Those being Batman Sub-Zero, which came out in 1998, of which gives Mr. Freeze a much more dignified presence than he got in Joel Schumacher's movie, and Mystery of Batwoman, which came out in 2003. The movie format of DC animated features would continue with the likes of the Batman and Superman movie, Superman Doomsday, Justice League The New Frontier, Justice League Crisis of Two Earths, Batman Under the Red Hood, Batman Year One, and Suicide Squad Hell to Pay, among many, many others. Number 5. The Absence of Robin Although the character of Dick Grayson, aka Robin, wasn't always in the Batman animated series, he was still an important character in the series universe, and it would have made sense to include him in Batman Mask of the Phantasm. However, without giving any explanation as to where Batman's sidekick is, Robin was just simply absent from this animated Batman adventure. This is because Mask of the Phantasm scriptwriters wanted the movie to be a more personal story about Batman and Bruce Wayne. An origin story while focusing on his current turmoil. I guess there was just no place to fit Robin into the mix, which may have left devoted fans of the series to scratch their bat heads and wonder where on earth is Robin anyway? The comic book adaptation explains that Robin is currently at college. However, this answer probably led to even more confusion, as in the animated series universe, this places the events of Batman Mask of the Phantasm to take place after the events of the upcoming series which followed it, which is kind of weird when you think about it. 
Also, the added irony is that the character was also going to turn up in Batman Returns one year earlier, but was removed from that movie too. Yep, in the early 90s, people just didn't really have any time for Robin. Number 4. Music of the Phantasm The music created for Batman Mask of the Phantasm is nothing short of superb. A sheer masterpiece and a delight for the ears. It sounds epic and grand in scope and scale, and even often biblical, along with carrying great emotions and tragedy. It's worth watching the movie for, if anything, the musical score alone. It sounds kind of similar to Danny Elfman's Batman score, but an extension of that which takes the sound of Batman to grander heights. The Batman animated series had used snippets of Danny Elfman's theme that he had created for Batman and Batman Returns. But for Batman Mask of the Phantasm, it was decided to give Batman a brand new theme, to which musician Shirley Walker composed the movie. She was the perfect choice as she composed episodes for the animated series, as well as helping to perform the music for the 1989 Batman movie, as well as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, and True Lies, among many others. Walker is a very talented musician who definitely deserves more praise for her work, and thanks to the music that she provides for Mask of the Phantasm, it becomes a movie that you could easily watch with your ears, if that even makes any sense. Number 3. The Phantasm is sort of based on a pre-existing villain. Yeah, believe it or not, but the Phantasm isn't entirely an original character created for Mask of the Phantasm, but is based somewhat on the character the Reaper, who, like the Phantasm, takes on a Grim Reaper image, complete with a scythe. The character first appeared in Batman Year 2 in 1987. And just like the Phantasm, the Reaper is a vigilante who is killing off powerful crime figures in acts of revenge for his own sense of self-justice. The story would see Batman have to team up with Joe Chill, the man who killed his parents, in order to stop the terrifying Reaper. Where in a final confrontation, Batman finds out that the Reaper is the father of Rachel, a woman that he had fallen in love with and planned to marry. So in a weird way, it's like the writers of Batman Mask of the Phantasm took the Rachel and Reaper characters and combined them to create the Phantasm. For all we know, the Phantasm in Mask of the Phantasm might just be the Reaper, as the character is never actually named or referred to as the Phantasm in the actual movie. Number 2. It was a box office bomb. Despite Batman Mask of the Phantasm being a gorgeous movie in terms of its storytelling, animation and music, and its cult following that it has since built up, Upon its original release, the movie was an absolute box office dud, not even recouping back its $6 million budget. This was because of Warner Brothers deciding to give the movie a limited release and releasing it on Christmas Day. And let's be honest, how many people go to their local cinemas on Christmas Day? There was also very little promotion when it came to advertising the movie. In fact, here in Australia, there was no promotion whatsoever. I only knew about this movie's existence when reading a Superman comic one day and seeing the movie's poster advertised within the comic book pages, which immediately made me think, what is this epic looking animated Batman movie? The irony is, in hindsight, many Batman fans agree that Mask of the Phantasm is better than any other of the three live action Batman movies of the 90s. But despite its box office downfall, the movie was praised by critics upon its release. Gene Siskel in particular had a love for it, and it was even nominated for Best Animated Feature Award, but lost to The Lion King. But despite its praise as Mask of the Phantasm came and went, and no one really saw it. And it would only get recognized for how good it truly is in later years. Number one, the toys gave away the movie's twist. Warner Brothers was keen to keep the twist of Mask of the Phantasm a secret upon the movie's release, as the very foundation of the movie itself is who is the Phantasm. It's that one major question that drives the movie and keeps first-time viewers intrigued. However, despite best efforts, the plot twist of the movie was ruined thanks to the movie's action figurine lineup, to which the Phantasm action figurine clearly shows that the character's true identity is that of Andrea Bermont clearly spoiling the twist for all those who hadn't seen the film. Also keep in mind that the toys came out before the movie's release, leaving no intrigue or mystery into the movie's biggest, well, mystery. 
At least with the Inspector Gadget action figures, they covered up Dr. Claw's face. Why couldn't they do that with the Phantasm? But despite this, the toy's plot spoiler doesn't take away from any of the brilliance that is Mask of the Phantasm. As with the animated series, don't let the fact that it's a cartoon detract you away from Mask of the Phantasm, as it's a brilliant Batman tale. It's beautifully told, animated, and scored. It's a great Batman experience that gives a unique look into Batman's origin and modern day woes. And I cannot praise this movie enough, so please Batman fans, check it out. So anyway, with that, see ya!